Or slash easy yo dot pdf. How many of you know Jesus' yoke is easy? Yeah. Amen. You shouldn't be struggling to be saved. Amen. You shouldn't be. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, you won't struggle to be saved. Go, go, the devil is always on me. How much church do you miss in a month? Part time church goer. There's more happening here than you realize. Yeah, it's not just us coming together just to hear a word, even though that's a good part of it. But all of our spiritual energy connects when we come together. And there is power in the gathering and the fellowship. Yeah. It encourages us, strengthens us, gives us examples for living. Amen. Amen. Don't take it for granted because when they close the doors and you can't get in, you're going to wish you had put your time in. Amen. Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus says, come unto me. Oh, how much is all? This is everybody. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will what? Give you rest. Everyone that is laboring and carrying a heavy load. He's not talking about your job. He's talking about the load you carry spiritually and emotionally. This is how concerned about you he is. He says he's not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of your infirmities. What we go through touches him. What we deal with touches him. He said he's not too high, but was at all points tempted like we are. The difference is he didn't sin. So if he went through it and didn't sin, that means he can tell us what we need to do. <laughs> that means he has all the answers. That's what that scripture is about. It's about what you're carrying. It's about the pain you have. Stuff you can't tell or you feel you can't tell anybody. Stuff you've been through. The private you. That's what he's calling for. The private you. The you that hurts when nobody's around. The you that tears up when you just think about how heavy things have been. The you the devil's trying to cancel and put suicidal thoughts in your head to make you think you shouldn't be here. Like you were a mistake. That's who he's asking for. He's telling you, come unto me. And I'll give you rest. Man, I already preached. Hey, Amen. Oh, Jesus is speaking directly to those of us that are burdened with the cares and issues that this life has brought us. I think, you know, I thank God for the older church. And, you know, you don't ever hear me slamming the old church. My foundation roots everything uh, in the church. I don't even let folks come on our platforms and dog the church out. I delete those comments. You ain't finna. That's why I don't go to church. Shut up, because that's not why. So I delete that. You can't say that on my page. Amen, because the church has helped us, and the church is the enemy of the devil, and God is still using the church, and the church will be here until he comes and gets his church. No, not just the church in your chest. The physical church building, us all together, collective body. Listening to them Hebrew Israelites. Chess church. We are the church. The church is see the church is in here. No, the church ain't in there. Church is here. Hey Amen. Don't you let nobody say you that lie sitting at home and and yeah, we just it, it don't matter where you are. Yes, it does. It does matter where you are. No matter how you look, yes, it does. 
It does matter how you look. The Bible says it come as you is. First, it didn't say that. And that didn't have nothing to do with your clothes. Amen. But we look nice. We make sure. Amen. We ain't in here uh, looking like the club. Amen. That's a sin. It's a sin for you to look like a club. It's a sin for you to wear tight stuff to entice somebody. It's a sin for stuff to be showing. Amen. Look at somebody say, cover yourself. Uh, say it just like I said it. It's ridiculous. Want to throw all the rules away because folk won't act right. Church don't acquiesce to people. People change for the most high God. You're supposed to change what you're doing. Try to tell me what holiness is and you advertising your old lifestyle. That ain't holiness. I saw the boy online with all the Tattoos everywhere, all on his face, everywhere, and showing his draws. This what a man of God looked like. This a man of God in 2022. This the man of God. He look, he look iced out and teeth and the, the tatted all that. Hey, look. This what a 2022 man of God looked like. Yeah. A 2022 servant of the Lord. This what he looked like. Iced out. Inked up. Yeah, it. Pretty smile. This is what a 2022 man of God, servant of the Lord, look like. Somebody who really living like that. Turning away from sin. Serving the Lord. Who really out there in them trenches. Ministering to the youth. Breaking healing to the people. Deliverance to the people. Sharing the gospel. This is what a righteous man look like. 2022. This is what holiness look like. Yeah, y'all seen where I come from? I look where I'm at. Pour the champagne. Let's have some toast. Yeah, for real. Holy Gabbana. Chill. Why are you showing your criminal lifestyle? Why are you advertising that on Instagram? Put a shirt on. Put a shirt on and cover your draw. Why are your drawers showing? That ain't what no man of God look like. No, man of God look like he can get a job somewhere. Brother, you can't get no job nowhere but a tattoo parlor. And you can't get a job there because you did half of them with a clothes hanger. Nobody want to see that. Draw showing. You know that draw showing, that came from prison. That's sexually, sexy lingerie to a prisoner. That looked good to him. It's so funny. To, well, it ain't funny, but Forbes just came out with an article. I have it. I'm going to talk about it in the rewind where they said, if you've gotten a tattoo within the last 10 years, you might have cancer cells in you. You didn't read the fine print in there, did you? When you went into the parlor. Advertising that. You don't advertise that, man. You better rebuke that. Amen. And denounce that. Yeah, everybody make mistakes, but we don't celebrate the old life in the new life. Amen. We don't put... Amen. Brother, if you really save and fill with the Holy Ghost power of God, you would put a shirt on. You would tuck your draws all the way in. Can I say draws? Tuck them in. But Jesus is speaking directly to those of us that are burdened with cares and issues that this life has brought us. Psalms 55 and 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall what? He shall what? This is the promise. Give it to God and he'll sustain you, keep you. In other words, give it to God, you'll be all right. That's what sustain means. You will be all right. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Many of us were abused, neglected, abandoned, left to make hard decisions at a young age. 
raped and molested and some of us were taken advantage of or totally exposed to unsavory things too early in our lives. Amen. As a young person, you saw the wrong thing. Amen. Messed up your childhood. Messed it up. Sometimes parents expose their children to things they shouldn't. Right. Now I ain't talking about pornography and stuff like that, which that's bad, but I'm talking about conversations. Yeah, y'all yeah, talking, talking about splitting up and calling each other names and making children lose faith in family. Yeah. And that child has to deal with adult feelings yeah. and work out adult situations. You talking about your husband to the children. Right. Tell them how bad rotten daddy is. Jive he is. Talking about your mother. Oh, she this and that. You don't understand. That's all they have is y'all's image. Yeah. That's all they have. And you can't even protect your own children. Because you mad. You angry. And you're going to yell all that in front of your child. Your child's exposed to things unsavory things at an early age so they don't see any hope so they get into stuff I, it can be quiet I'm going to keep going because I know I'm telling the truth you don't get that mad were you talking like that in front of children And many were abused and neglected and abandoned and left to make hard decisions. Some of these decisions these children are making, they shouldn't have to make at their age. They should be going to bed worrying about the next day. Can I keep going in here? Psalms 51 and 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, that thou wilt not what? Despise. Despise. God is looking for that broken heart, that contrite heart. Because of what you went through, because of what you've been through, because of what you're managing and dealing with. Because when you expose the things at a young age and you got to carry somebody's negative opinion of your father, negative opinion of your mother, somebody done sold that into you, it's going to birth sin in you. Yeah. yeah, that's the way a young person reacts to that kind of drama. Sin. They're going to go get into something to try to find some kind of affirmation. Some way to make their flesh feel pleasure. Because they're fighting pain. Once the home breaks down, their own image of themselves break down. And they need pleasure to fill the void and to stop the pain. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, you said you wanted to be at this church, so we tell the truth in here. You get mad and leave, and the truth going to still be in here. And you're going to be slipping and watching it. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth in here. Amen. Amen. The devil has burdened us down with life altering struggles. That we did not deserve. And definitely didn't know how to handle. We are all victims of the sins of others. Yeah, we're all victims of the sins of others. Stuff you didn't deserve and stuff you didn't know how to handle. You tried to handle it the best way and messed it up and made it worse. Because you weren't prepared for it. And God is sitting back. Giving you Jesus to fix it for you. That's what he's here for. To fix that situation. To take that sin away. Yeah. When he died on the cross, he died to take your sins away. 
Your sins are a result of the sins of others. I'm going to keep preaching. We're all victims of sin. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temp temptation taken you, but such is common to man. Temptation is common to me. All men. Amen. So what somebody else is going through is no worse than what you're going through. It feels the same. It's processed the same. Because it's all common to me. But God is what? Faithful. Faithful. He's not going to suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Yeah. But with the temptation also does what? Yeah. You know what the funny thing about that is? You've always known the way to escape. Yeah. Ain't nobody sinning without a way to escape. <laughs> way to escape right there. Door is right there open. You looked at the door and went the other way. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, God, the devil overpowered me. And God is going to say, look at him. That's the devil. Does he look like he can overpower you? The Bible says that. When we look up on him, everybody's going to be like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> so all this time, all this hell. That's what caused it. That's what the Bible says. That's the one. Yeah, and God's going to be like, that's because he ain't got the power to do it. You was doing that. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, I'm in the house. I'm all the way in the house. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the house. Amen. <laughs> he said, but with the temptation, he's going to always make a way to escape that ye may be able to what? Bear. bear it. You'll be able to bear it. So no matter what you went through, you're able to bear it. You know why you're able to bear it? Because Jesus died so you would be able to bear it. You know why you're able to bear it? Because he bore it for you. It can't kill you because it already killed him. <laughs> He's already died for it, so it can't be bad enough to kill you. <laughs> Matthew 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you. That picture in the beginning is a yoke. And the yoke is basically what oxen or cattle, they put them in the yoke so that they can control them. Yeah. Keep them together and control them, control their movements, whatever. And he's saying he has a yoke like that, that he could put on you. Yeah. Because when we're saved, he puts his yoke on us. Amen. He yokes us to him. So we are with him yeah. in Congress, moving when he moves, yeah. following and amen, him guiding us. Because we're yoked with him. Paul even went so far and said, I'm handcuffed to him. He said, I'm a prisoner of Christ. So wherever you go, God, you, you can't go without me. I'm handcuffed to you. I'm your prisoner. But he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find what? Yes. That's where your pain is. Your soul. Your soul. Your soul. Because that's the part that belongs to God. Your soul. That's the part he's going to get. And that's the part the devil wants. The Bible said don't fear him that can just destroy your body. But rather fear him that can destroy what? soul and body where in hell the devil wants your soul in hell so your soul is what goes through travail your soul because that's the part that will live forever 
Amen. When you die, your body, you, man, your body, God don't want your body. You don't want your body. Anybody get tired of your body? You know you get tired of it, especially when it won't do what you ask it to do. Amen. And when it make you do stuff you know you shouldn't do. <laughs> body get on your nerves sometimes. Amen. Especially when you're trying to get it in shape. Then it turns into the devil's body. Amen. You can get out of shape quick. But take a long time to get in shape. What is that? Why does it take so long? I remember I was talking to my doctor one time, my, uh, Dr. Reed. I was talking to him one time before I met Dr. Janine, my old doctor. And I was talking to him and I was like, man, I've been doing everything. He said, I've been taking all this stuff. I was like, man, my blood pressure's still high. My, my, everything's still messed up. I mean, what, like, 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 when am I going to see results? He said, how old are you? <laughs> and you know how you know where somebody's going to go with this? So you don't want to answer? So I'm not telling you. How old are you? I think I was 40 at the time. He's like, you 40? He said, you ran your body down for 40 years and you can't even give it 40 days? He said, it's gonna take some time, young man. Some time. It took time to tear your body up like this. He said, it took time. Said, it's gonna take some time to get it back. You can't, so don't quit when you're in the gym and you're working out and you look at yourself in the morning, you're like, golly, I'm wasting my time. Don't give up. It took time for you to get like that. It took time. I preach. I preach and have my son more clients by the time I'm done. <laughs> you ain't looking like Landon no time soon. No time soon. He's a billboard for his business. You ain't looking like that. I watch that boy. Seven years. I watched him. He'd go in there, he'd be eating a certain thing, and I'd be like, man, you eating chat. Then one week we try to give him something, he's like, hey, eat that this week. No. Why not? Because I'm trying to put a muscle right here. <laughs> I mean, he just, he can just point to his body. This week I'm putting one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Takes time. Amen. Take it's time. <laughs> Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Meek and lowly is the opposite of the devil. The devil is prideful and arrogant. Amen. And he wants you like that, where you think about yourself before you make any decision. Can I keep preaching in here? When he is speaking of his yoke, he is saying that his way is better. And what he has to offer is lighter than what the devil has done. Yeah, when you are with the devil, your way is going to be hard. Because the devil's going to keep putting heavy stuff on you. Then he's going to keep making you do things to bring heaviness in your life. Bad choices brings heaviness. Bad decisions bring heaviness. Doing good makes things gooder. Makes things better. Your homeschooling parents like, say, Pastor, you're going to talk right in here. <laughs> I was making a point. But it does. It makes things better. His way is better. What he has to offer is lighter than what the devil has done. John 10 and 10. The thief come if not but for it to steal. Stealing is heavy. Yeah. When somebody steals something from you. Oh, yes. ooh, when you take something that, oh, especially something hard earned. Oh, gosh. He comes but for to steal. And then when you used to steal. Yeah. Look at everybody. That, that, that ain't me. Well, I used to steal. 
Hey man, when I was in high school, we used to call it beating. And we just pillage, just robbing. And we didn't do no hardcore stuff, but we steal stuff like the keys to the school. We stole the keys to the school. So we could take, we could take the lawnmower and cut our name in the football field. We did that. Little stuff like that. Changed the words on the marquee so that when everybody came to school the next morning, our names would be on the marquee as all the buses drove up. Little stuff like that. My mama over here about to just, she having flashbacks. Oh, this white collar stuff, man. We weren't trying to kill nobody. We just, we just needed the school's keys. We needed access. They got him back. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, man. But yeah, so stealing, but I, we were still, but I couldn't sleep. You can't sleep on stealing. Get in the bed and just every knock, everything you hear sound like the police. Roach walking too hard sound like. Everything sound like the police. That's a difference between police and police. They become police when you done something. Yeah. Ain't that right, Herm? They the police. So that heart, that anxiety, you can't rest. as no thief. And you can't rest when you wildin' either. Because you just know. Especially when you got church training. You wildin' by, by night and then get in the bed repenting. Scared. Can hear grandma's rocking chair all while you trying to sleep. <laughs> Baby, you know better than that. <laughs> but the thief coming to steal, then to kill, yeah. kill your body, yes. and then destroy your soul. Yeah. That's what the devil is doing to you. And the worst part is folks are warning you. God will always send people to help save your life and you still won't stop. And Jesus is saying, my way is better. I come that you may have life more abundantly. Which means not just heaven, but better now. You can sleep when you ain't Creeping, slipping and dodging and hiding your phone from everybody. Somebody get your phone, they don't know who you are no more. Man, I'm preaching in here. Got burner accounts. That ain't your real social media account. That's the one you want the church to see. Man, you living like that, that's hard. That's hard. To learn of him means to follow his word and his way. So you will have what? Understanding of how to defeat all the issues that the enemy has caused. When he says, learn of me, he wants to teach you how to understand. So you can defeat what the devil has done. Not act through it. Not perpetuate, not push it. Not let it cause you to mistreat others. Psalms 19 and 105. 119 and 105. Thy word is a what? And a what? Those are the answers. His word is going to show you where to walk and where to go. Yeah. Learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. We must learn from Christ how to be meek and lowly. Pride? What you prideful for? And you are nobody. You ain't you nobody. If you 
was Elon Musk, I'd let you be prideful. If it was Bill Gates, I'd let you be prideful. Okay, yeah, you, 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 you got enough money and power to be a little prideful. Still going to hell, but <laughs> I understand. I don't understand no prideful person, that's nobody. People assume to be prideful and you're nobody. You want people to think you're somebody because your family think you nobody. That's where it comes from. Yeah, I don't worry about it. See, men don't get around me flexing and stuff if they're secure in their home. I don't have to worry about a man if he's secure in his own home and know who he is. He ain't got to get around me grandstanding and flexing. But the ones that get around me and got to start telling me all that they got in the nun and they're like, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, I know, bruh, yeah. So things are pretty bad at home, huh? <laughs> Wife don't listen to you, does she? Yeah, you want me to hear what she won't listen to. And the reason she won't listen to all this is because she knows you better than me. She don't want to hear it. You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Man, I preach in here. Boy, that pride rises up. Folk can't take criticism. They can't take rebuke. They can't stand order when there's pride. God says be meek and lowly. Do you know how meek and lowly Jesus had to be to even put up with the disciples? Peter? That's the only way to handle what the devil has caused in our lives. The devil wants you to be prideful, but if you're meek and lowly, you're in the position to handle it. We must remain in a position to receive help for our, uh, for our issues and find the rest we need. Do you hear that? So your pride keeps you from being in position to get help. The minute somebody try to help a prideful person, they got to bounce. So they can never take care of what's wrong with them. Because they can't stay and be corrected. Colossians 5 and 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, what? Bowels of mercy, kindness. Can you humble your mind? Humble your own opinion of yourself. You ain't great. Amen. You're not great. Be editable. Let the preach word edit you. Amen. Let the message change you. For my yoke is what? Easy. Easy. You shouldn't be struggling to be saved. That's right. Man. Saved folk don't have to look over their shoulder. That's right. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is all the way around us. Amen. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You have to creep. Duck it. No. His yoke is what? Easy. And his... Man, I remember back, you know, I used to have warrants and stuff because you don't pay tickets in Texas. Some of y'all from other states. In Texas, you don't pay a ticket. You get a warrant for your arrest. And they take you to jail when they stop you. So when you ride, that's riding dirty for real. Yes, yes, and let me explain. That's riding dirty. I heard you use it in another context, and that wasn't correct. So let me let you know, riding dirty. <laughs> yeah, that's really riding dirty. Yeah, you got a warrant out on your wrist. You got to be very, very careful. <laughs> Amen. One time I had a warrant for my arrest because I had a ticket and I was just at the pay phone. They, that's back when they had pay phones. Children don't know what that is. Y'all know what a pay phone is? Jonathan, you know what a pay phone is? Oh, well, he's, you know. Yeah, what well, a pay phone. I'm at the pay phone. Man, I'm out of my own business. Hell, no, just at the pay phone. Trying to call my mama or somebody. Just, I don't know. And a cop rode by and I spoke to him. 
said, how you doing? <laughs> Blurk! <laughs> Why did he come back? He turned around and came back. I said, say, you know, when he came back, I'm like, everything okay, officer? He said, yeah, everything okay with you? I said, yes. He said, well, let me see. What's your name? Give me your drugs. <laughs> My name is Robert Johnson. The blues singer. I'm his great, great, great nephew. No, I didn't do that. But I handed him my license. I went to jail. I went to jail. I called my daddy. I said, Daddy, I'm in jail. Come get me. Come get me out. He said, Nope. Nope. I said, Why? He said, Because I don't want to use my money for that. What kind of preacher are what kind of, what? Because I don't want to use my money for that. You did that. You got that ticket. You didn't pay it. I don't want to use my money for that. And that was his answer. I know he didn't tell my mama because she would have helped me. Would you have helped me, mother? Go on and get him out. Get him out. Go on, George. Get him out. This is a, man, I didn't have no advocate. Man, I'm in there eating burritos. That's all they feed you in there is them old microwave burritos. Carcinogen, poison, and everything. I'm in there eating burritos just in a little cell by myself in jail. I said, boy, my ministry gonna be great. I'm starting off like Paul and all of them. The Lord's like, nah, I don't, I don't think so. Pay your ticket. Pay the ticket. All you had to do was pay the ticket. And you know, we be having money to pay it. Like we want to use it for something else. I was at that age where a few other things were more important. <laughs> but yeah, you walking around dirty, you driving and your inspection is out or something. And you just... Every cop pull up. You don't want to look at, you don't want to make eye contact. <laughs> and then you can feel him, you can feel him on the side. Because <laughs> if, if he's stopping, Dr. Marco. <laughs> I'm going to get a ticket. <laughs> That's riding dirty. Yeah, and sometimes, look, y'all. I'm, I, you know, I ain't no prude. I've been there. Sometimes you just can't get that inspection right now. And you just do it what you feel you have to do. I'm not an advocate for breaking the law, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just, can I just be honest? We all need prayer for that area. God help us all, Lord. Help the pastor. He up here saying stuff he probably shouldn't be saying. I don't know. But sometimes, Herbert, you gotta let us off the hook. <laughs> Bro, we tried to make it. <laughs> Man, give us a warning. <laughs> Matthew 11 and 13. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Living for the Lord is light. Yes. The longer we are in Christ, the easier our walk becomes. Did you know that? It becomes easier the longer you walk. Sometimes you got to outlive your past. You got to outlive it. You got to beat your past running. His way makes our way what? Easier. Proverbs 13 and 15. 
Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor is what? That means it stays hard. But living for Jesus gets easier. Now when you first get saved, everything don't change overnight. Your heart did. Your heart and your mind did. But your life, everything still looks bad. And you got to tackle things inch by inch. Everything's a cinch. What? Inch. Okay, Lord, we're working on this this week. Okay, Lord, we're working on this this week. Could take your time. Man, you know how long it took you to be that foolish? It took a long time for you to get that dumb. You got a PhD in dumbology. That was an eight-year course. You've been dumb a long time. So it's going to take time. But the longer you're in Christ, the easier your walk becomes if you can just hang in there. Amen. Once we buy into his plan for us and follow it, over time, we will see results and our burden is made what? Light. So don't come in here and try to use the Lord to take the cops off your tail. They followed me here, so I'm going to go to the altar. <laughs> like that movie, The Apostles. I'm just, they out there, the lights flashing. They in the doorway, and you in here. Woo! Lord! Oh! Oh! They're in the back just waiting. Don't wait till he horse and can't, can't say nothing else. No, it's going to take time. It's going to take time because it took you time to be dumb. Yeah. And you took your time and did it. You was meticulously dumb. You planned dumb stuff over time. You didn't just arrive at dumb. That was a process. Well, now it's going <laughs> to be a process to correct it. It's going to take time. We're going to work with you. We're going to try to help you. Amen. But you got to sit in and pay attention. You got to listen and then you got to let go of your pride. Amen. Amen. You can't think you're already there. And if Paul said he wasn't already there, I know you ain't already there. He said, I haven't arrived. Neither have I attained. He said, but I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. He's still pressing. I'm still, we're all still pressing. So he ain't better than us. So suck it up. Let go of the pride so we can help you. Once we buy into this plan, though, we will see results and our burden is made light. Psalms 19 and 8. The statutes of the Lord are what? Right. right. Rejoicing the heart and the commandment of the Lord is what? Pure. Pure. Doing what? Wait. Doing what? God's commandments enlightens the eyes. That means over time, when you obey his commands, you see more clearly. Anybody different now than you were a few years ago, you see things differently, don't you? Somebody talk about you and come after you. You used to with just, I mean, some of y'all would pull your wig off and go to town. You had a weapon in your wig was a weapon. You had stuff hid in it. Is that glass in your wig? Yeah, but it don't hurt me because I know how to move in it. Oh, but when I get mad. <laughs> I mess you up. But now, folks talk about you. Mess with you. Now you just take it to the Lord in prayer and say, well, there must be something wrong with them. So let me pray for them because maybe something's going on in their family. Maybe something's wrong with them. Maybe they deal with something. Or here's the good one. Maybe they're like I used to be. And they haven't arrived at understanding God's commandments. Their eyes haven't been enlightened by God's pure commands. 
But when we continue to hold on to our way, we get no relief and our life becomes what? Heavy laden. Now, why would your life be heavy laden and Jesus is telling you to come unto me so your life won't be heavy laden? Is what you want to do that important? Is what you want to do that fun? No. If you know the results of what you want to do are going to be death, then why would you refuse Christ taking on your load? Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are what? The ways of death. Summary! <laughs> Jesus came to offer us what? Life. life, but not only after death, but a better life now. Anybody want a better life now? I can honestly say, since I've been in Christ, my life is way better. If your life got worse when you came to Christ, then you didn't come to Christ. I hear people tell me that, man, it seemed like I was doing good when I was in the world. When I got saved, once I started praying and reading the Bible, man, it seemed like all hell started breaking loose. You ain't saved. I got saved when I went up to No, you didn't get saved by the Jesus I know. You sitting there speaking against everything he said in his word. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. So I don't know who you came to and accepted. And I can't stand when the preachers try to preach that. Yeah, but once you get saved, that's when the devil really on your track. Before you got saved, you was the devil. What are you talking about? That's stupid. Why do these folk preach some stupid stuff on the internet? Somebody's life getting worse because they accepted Christ. Then you're going to reverse the Bible. You stupid. The devil has caused so much damage to God's creation and God's intentions for mankind. The devil did that. The devil hurt you. The gospel's not hurting you. The devil hurt you. Amen. Yeah. God gave us free will so we could choose him. But when we don't choose him, we choose the devil. And they do bad, you do bad things when you're with the devil. And your bad things affect people. And people go through bad things because of the bad things we do. And we create sin. Amen. And people have to go through and deal with our sins. It's not God doing it. It's us. The devil's causing this damage. God desires to help those that will defy the odds and overcome all the issues that the enemy implanted in them. It was never his will for us to be subject to sin. He just gave us a choice. This is why he did not desire for us to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's a stupid message too. He wanted us to eat it. See, he acted like he acted like God don't act like he is look at somebody and say he is how you you is and you act like that's so stupid Woo! I wish I could just call all their names tell you don't watch them no more they say some dumb stuff mm -mm. no it was never his intention for us to be subject to sin that's why he didn't want us to eat of the tree of good and evil because knowing evil made us subject to it. That's why he said, don't eat of this tree. If you don't eat of this tree, everything will be great. Jesus had to come to destroy the works of the devil and restore us back to the pre-fall creation that God made. We can now live in the rest that the Garden of Eden provided. God wants us to overcome our past trauma 
and win. Look at somebody and say win. win. Win the struggle against the evil that the devil embedded into our lives. He wants us healed. Our families healed. Our earthly relationships healed. He wants us to defeat sin and win. Amen. He is beckoning us all to come unto him. No matter how heavy our struggles and sins have been, he will give us rest. Psalms 27 and 7, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Now, this is a very personal prayer. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast made, thou hast been my help. So leave me not, neither forsake me. O oh God of what? My salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, when this is everything, he's saying when everybody turns against me, when the world, all I have turns against me. Then the Lord will do what? Take, you. Take me up. Everyone stand to your feet. When my father and my mother, sister and my brother, best friend, loved ones, cousin, whoever, when they forsake me, when they turn against me, that's when the Lord will take me. Jesus wants to be in that place. He wants that place. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what it is, Jesus wants that place. He wants to be your go-to. He wants to give you rest. If you need that today, I'm going to ask you to just come up. Whoever you are, rest. It's been a struggle. It's been heavy. Life's been heavy. People put heavy stuff on you. People falsely accuse you. They misunderstand you. Talk against you. Just put heavy weight on you. It's been tough. It's been tough, but it's not unbearable because you're here. And he said it can't be unbearable. It's not going to kill you. It can't kill you because he's already died for it. Death has already been paid. He wants your life, and he wants you to give it to him. Whoever you are, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest in him. Rest. 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 Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray right now. Father, we've been through so much. Many of us have been through all kinds of things. Abandonment and neglect, and persecution. Father God, at young ages, have been through molestation and rape and violent acts of others. Exposure to all kinds of things, pornography and all kinds of sinful things even at a young age. Parents fighting and arguing and questioning which one would end up with us and making us feel no value at all. Ex just, we're just expendable in a divorce. And I'll take them, you take them. And just all the things that make us feel less than what you created or what you intended. And we walked around with these feelings, Father God, and just nobody understands, at least we think that. And 
we get into our own minds and heads and it just births sin births sins in our heart those sins come out of our heart become actions father god and we take it out on other people but father we come to you because your word told us to come unto you all that labor and are carrying stuff heavy stuff heavy things we bring those things to you right now we bring them to you right now and father we cast them at your feet right now we cast them at your feet father god deliver us set us free and give us rest give us rest many of us father god are tired 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 of what the world did to us tired of what we've had to carry what we've had to deal with tired we need rest so give us rest for our souls in jesus name rest for our souls for those that are weary give us rest come on lift your hands up for those that are weary give us rest those that are prideful make us meek father god heal deliver give us what we need we want to live for you we want to live for you in jesus name we pray amen 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 let me tell you something When he says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. That's a process. Coming unto him is a process. It would be so great if we could just give him everything at once. But the reason we can is because of the barriers we put up ourselves. So we got to get open to him to give it up. And that takes time. That takes prayer. But most importantly, it takes perseverance. Yeah. If you can hang in here until your change comes, it will come. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody and say, I'm going to hang in here. And I'm giving it all to God. All to Jesus. All 